Good morning. The words to all of our songs today will be up on the screen. Only a couple of them are in the books, so if you just rely on the screens, you'll be good. Uh, today we welcome Deacon Dan. He's going to be preaching to us for the first time this, uh, this weekend. And we have Voices in Praise singing with uh, us back here, the Young Voices in Praise. If your children want to be a part of this group, see me after church, and we can hook them up to this group too. Our opening song is Here I Am to Worship. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Celebrate today this 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosach, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as offering to the Lord on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries. To Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels, some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son that he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers, and there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. So what is it, Lord? Are you accepting our brothers and sisters? from all nations and from every language, like we heard from the prophet Isaiah? Or are we going to encounter a narrow gate and a locked door, like we heard in the gospel from St. Luke? What is it, Lord? Our lives are already filled with a lot of uncertainty and messiness. We come to Mass where we look to the scriptures and to Jesus himself to provide clarity and truth. We look for guidance on our spiritual journey to the big questions in life. Questions like, will we be admitted to our Lord's eternal bank banquet? The questions don't get much bigger than that. And yet, this weekend, we get this contradiction. First, we hear about the acceptance of all nations. And then, we hear about a locked door. So what is it, Lord? This can be one of those weekends where it's tempting to just close up our missalettes, cling to the easier teaching. Uh, we're all going to be accepted as long as we don't do anything too bad. And let's just get on with the Mass so we can get on with our lives. So much for looking to scriptures or to Jesus for clarity. Or so it might seem. There is another way to approach this apparent contradiction. And it starts by taking a closer look at St. Luke's Gospel. Jesus is teaching in the towns and villages as he makes his way towards Jerusalem, where he will undergo his death and resurrection. Jesus is asked a question with eternal consequences that continues to be discussed 2,000 years later. Lord, will only a few people be saved? First, Jesus gives us a short answer. Strive to enter through the narrow gate where many will attempt, but will not be strong enough. What type of strength is Jesus referring to? We find insights in the letter to the Hebrews today, where we hear that we are to exercise discipline that will lead to righteousness and give us the strength to enter through the narrow gate. Then Jesus elaborates on his initial response in typical fashion with a parable. Notice that this parable begins after the master of the house has arisen. Taken within the context of Jesus' journey to his crucifixion and his rising from the dead, we see that Jesus is the master in this parable who has arisen to lock the door, leaving us to knock and seek entry. So, between the narrow gate and now this locked door, it's no wonder that at this point we're left to ask, who will join Jesus in his heavenly banquet? I believe that this question of who gets into the banquet can be likened 
to a situation that many of us have found ourselves in during the past two and a half years. The global pandemic caused many of us to cancel important events, while others were able to move forward with these events, but with greatly reduced numbers of attendees. Many of us were faced with questions like, how many guests can safely attend? And who should I invite? My own family was faced with these questions when my son Craig and his fiance Abby were planning their wedding for the fall of 2020. After deciding that about 30 guests was a safe number, they were faced with a difficult task of dwindling down a list that could have easily been in the hundreds. By the time the immediate family was invited, there wasn't much room for others. So how did they decide? They rounded out their invitation list in much the same way that I suspect many of you do. They thought about who they had developed the closest relationships with, who they spent time with, who they turned to when things were tough. Their invitation list ended up being all about relationships. So it is with Jesus. When some knock at the master's door and ask him to open it, he'll reply, I do not know where you're from. Even after reminding and pleading with the master that we ate in your, and drank in your company and you taught in our streets, he'll respond a second time, I do not know where you're from. I believe that Jesus is saying, we don't have a relationship and it's about relationships. Jesus is saying that it's not enough that we just eat and drink in his company. It's about relationships. While it's a great start to come to Mass and receive him, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, Jesus is saying it's not enough to just show up and receive communion if we don't believe in his true presence in the Eucharist and if we're not keenly aware of this great gift that we're receiving. He wants us to use this gift as a means of developing a relationship with us. And it's not enough that we're just present when he teaches in our streets. It's about relationships. Again, it's a great start to come to Mass and be taught by the scriptures, but just passively listening to our readings in a homily aren't enough. He wants us to use this knowledge as a means of examining our lives and learning new ways to strengthen our relationship with him. Through the grace of God, through an unearned gift from God, all of us are invited into a relationship with Jesus. All of us, including our brothers and sisters from every nation. But that relationship is not forced. He loves us. So he gives us the free will to accept or reject that invitation into relationship. Once we accept the invitation, the question becomes, how do we develop and enhance it? The answer to that question is actually pretty easy, but living it is difficult. Like the development of our earthly, earthly relationships, we must dedicate the time to work on our relationship with him. Look at every close relationship you have. How did you get there? You spent time with that person. You shared your dreams with them, your joys, your struggles. You invested time in that relationship. With all the noise and distractions that society throws at us today, dedicating the time that's necessary to develop our relationships is hard. And depending on your life stage, it can be extremely hard. It takes discipline to develop fruitful relationships. We have to have the discipline turn off the TV, put down our phones, and find some quiet space to work on our relationships. And what applies in our earthly relationships also applies to our relationship with Jesus. The good news is that he's always available to us. We don't need to look far to find him. We just need to make the time for him. Of course, making that time is not easy. I struggle with it. I spent an hour in Eucharistic adoration, and since beginning my diaconate discernment and studies, I've been praying the Liturgy of the Hours twice a day, but I still struggle to dedicate time during those prayer sessions to just be quiet 
talk to Jesus, and listen to him. It takes discipline, and oftentimes I don't have it. So what are we to do? I invite you to join me in committing yourselves to making time every day to be quiet and work on your relationship with Jesus. The amount of time that you can dedicate to him will vary since we're all at very different life stages and we're all at different places on our spiritual journey. If you're just getting started, determine how much time you can commit to him. Perhaps it's five minutes, maybe it's 15. Regardless of how much time it is, just get started and exercise the discipline to stick with it every day. Talk with our Lord about what's the right commitment for you. It's a great way to start developing a relationship with him. After all, that relationship may hold the key to the question, Lord, will only a few be saved? I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Reliant on God's love and grace, let us voice our needs and concerns. For the church, may the Lord strengthen her in her mission to build God's kingdom on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may God empower them as they work to defend the dignity of life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are facing adversity or burden of any kind, may the Holy Spirit calm their fears and bring them peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may we have the discipline to enhance our relationship with Jesus so that one day we will enter into his eternal banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Callan Wayne Boyles and Charlotte Jean Schmidt, who are being baptized this weekend, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially parishioner Mary Rose Engler, who died this past week, may they experience eternal peace in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of resurrection for whom this mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those intentions that we hold in the quiet of our hearts.
Almighty Father, you hear our prayers and know our needs. Please grant whatever we ask according to your will, through your Son, Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you. And with joy, we proclaim. Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.